the ranking member uh, Graves, members of the committee, thank you for allowing me to share my priorities with you this morning. First, I ask that the committee approve the strong pipeline safety bill uh, before the current law expires this year. Some of you may remember that I testified before the pipeline subcommittee a month ago on this very issue. I have no higher priority than to ensure that the residents of my district and of your districts are safe from the kind of preventable disaster that struck the Merrimack Valley last September. It destroyed homes, shuttered businesses, injured first responders and residents, and took a young man's life. On April 9th, I introduced the Lionel Rondon Pipeline Safety Act. This bill, which was developed in close partnership with Senators Markey and Warren, as well as Representatives Moulton and Kennedy, includes a series of recommendations drawn from the National Transportation Safety Board interims report last November. It's been referred to this committee, as well as to the Committee on Energy and Commerce, which I understand is holding a hearing on pipeline safety at this moment. I ask that you give full consideration to H.R. 2139 so that this type of disaster never happens to another community again. Second, I ask that the committee ensure that wastewater infrastructure is a pillar of any infrastructure package that you develop. On Monday morning, I convened a Miramac River stakeholders meeting at the wastewater treatment plant in my hometown of Lowell. Among the key messages that I heard was the need for stable, reliable, and robust federal funding for wastewater improvements. The Chairman's Bill, the Water Quality Protection and Job Creation Act, is an excellent starting point for this part of the infrastructure package, and I strongly support it. This week, I will be introducing the Stop Sewerage Act, which would refine the sewer overflow and stormwater reuse municipal grants program, which was authorized last fall as part of the America's Water Infrastructure Act. My bill has four components. First, it increases the grants authorization level to $500 million annually. According to the EPA's most recent Clean Water Needs Survey, nearly $50 billion is needed for combined sewer overflow correction. Ever since the EPA's construction grants program was eclipsed by the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, cities and towns have shouldered an ever greater share of the burden of improving their wastewater infrastructure. In Massachusetts, nearly $1 billion is needed for improvements to combined sewer systems, and it's estimated that there are more than 800 such communities across the nation, including in Oregon and Missouri. The, grants, the grant program's authorization level should be decreased to more closely track with the degree of need across the nation. Second, my bill would extend the program's authorization through 2030. Communities with major wastewater infrastructure improvement needs deserve the assurance that the federal government intends to be a partner with them over the long term. And thus, I encourage the committee to approve a 10-year extension so that CSO communities can be certain of our commitment to them. Third, it adds a new prioritization criteria that grant support should be targeted to communities with high levels of sewerage in their rivers. Last year, 800 million gallons of raw sewerage and stormwater entered the Miramac River, which is a drinking water supply for hundreds of thousands of people and a regional recreational asset. State revolving funds have been useful to communities since the construction grants went away. However, underserved communities with major CSO challenges need grant support, not just loans. Finally, my bill would reduce the local cost share requirement for a grant. It would be based upon a community's ability to pay for sewer system improvements. In Lowell, ratepayers spend approximately $550 annually on their sewer service. The 20th percentile of annual uh, household income in the city is only $16,000. These households are paying approximately 3.5% of their annual income for their sewer service. The local cost share requirement should correspond to the percentage of household income these families are already paying for their sewer. It is our responsibility here in Congress to provide our communities with clean water and to ensure their safety and peace through accountability. So again, I hope that the committee will give full consideration to the Lionel Rondon Pipeline Safety Act as well as the Stop Sewerage Act. I thank you for the opportunity to testify and for your leadership.